So I think one thing that I feel like users and customers ask me all the time is like, why should I bother with multi-cloud? Like it's one cloud is hard enough. Why don't I just like pick one, pick Google and just get really good at Google and like why bother? They're all kind of, you know, they have similar IaaS services and they're all kind of catching up on some of the higher level stuff. Yes, there's some slight differences, but like why bother with multi-cloud? I feel like it's a common sentiment. And I think you actually gave a really good answer on why, you know, maybe you don't choose multi-cloud, multi-cloud chooses you. And I yeah. think that's, you know, if you want to talk through that. Right, yeah. So I think the, fir- the, the reason people jump to the most around multi-cloud is vendor lock-in or uh, price lock-in or something like that. And what's funny is that's almost the least common reason people think about multi-cloud. I think that's such an optimization that it's, it's not the right thing to think about first. It's, it's, it's unrealistic practically. Um, the, the better way to think about it is that, especially at the enterprise level, most companies that are adopting cloud are moving from something they had before. So if you had physical server or something, and so you're immediately in a multi or at least hybrid cloud environment. And you, know, you can call it multi-cloud, you call it hybrid cloud, but the challenges you have are pretty much the same. Um, and so that's one of the reasons uh, another reason is acquisitions. So if the company decides to buy another company and you're on one cloud provider and the company you're buying is on another, the company's not going to cancel the acquisition. Right, because, now you're multi-cloud. Yeah, exactly. They, they go to the central IT, ops, DevOps, whatever the team is, and say, figure it out, integrate this company into ours. Um, and then another reason is, is pricing pressure, I would say. And so you do at a certain scale, especially if you're an enterprise, you're spending millions of dollars on cloud, uh, get credits or some sort of uh, subsidy that pushes you one direction or another. And again, like a CFO or management, if they see a free you know, couple million dollars, it's, it's pretty hard to just say no to that. They're going to go to the team and say, let's, let's use this as best we can. So uh, you'll be stuck there. Uh, and then the last reason really is just enabling your teams to use best of breed services. So at any given moment, certain clouds have better AI services or better data, better data processing or you know, whatever it is, and you want your teams, you know, working on those problems to be able to use the best tools possible. And by saying, you know, you can only use this one cloud platform, it's just so restrictive. Right. And so, yeah, the, the multi-cloud will find you. It chooses you. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that last point, I think, around the differentiated service, I think does get underplayed. I think it's easy for, to sort of squint at, and look at it at a 100,000 foot view and say, eh, they kind of all offer the same thing. But I think what we see in practice is like, there's really good data services in Google. And so you're going to have a data team that's like, yeah, maybe I want to go leverage that because I'm sort of isolated from the rest of the business. I can just go use BigQuery and you know, some of these data pieces on their own versus you know, if I'm in the business of managing SharePoint for the business, like even if all my apps are running in AWS, there's value in me saying, yeah, it's Microsoft's problem to do manage SharePoint. Like I don't really don't care, right? right. So I think what we see is like, yeah, at 100,000 view, maybe you don't see the differentiation, but when you zoom in, it's there. And in practice, the practitioners will find it and use it. So one thing I see happen a lot when people bring up multi-cloud is a confusion in definition. Um, when you say multi-cloud to a room of people, usually there's a handful of people that have totally different thoughts of what multi-cloud is. And I really only believe in one of them strongly. I think the other ones are somewhat real, uh, but one is very real. And the four definitions are, uh, workload portability, workflow portability, data portability, and traffic portability. Mm-hmm. And so really quickly, the, the way I look at those is workload portability is the idea that you write your app once and run it anywhere. So the same app you write for one cloud could just run anywhere. Um, and that's very difficult to achieve because you want to integrate with these high-level services that a cloud provider provides, native logging, um, Lambda is a good example, and you don't want to dilute it, the cloud, to a least common denominator. So you really want to write workloads for a single cloud. Um, the second one is workflow portability, and that's the one I strongly believe in. Uh, that's the idea that you could maintain a consistent workflow across clouds for deployment, security, um, uh, sec- uh, networking, and so on. And I think that's very achievable. I mean, that's what our products do is workflow level portability. And then there's data and traffic. Um, both of those are, you know, data is being able to move data from one cloud provider to another. Uh, the biggest thing against you there is just the speed of light. It's it's not very realistic. And yeah, that's the, where people talk about things like data gravity. Yeah. Right? It's very hard to, you know, if you're moving a gig, okay, once you're moving 100 terabytes, it yeah. costs a lot of money and takes a lot of time. It's faster to load it in an airplane. Yeah, before. exactly. Yeah. Um, and then the last one's the, uh, traffic portability, which is, which is pretty real. It, it's if you have ge- uh, geographically dispersed users, you could actually route to the nearest cloud provider that could service them, and that's that's pretty reasonable. Right. And I think realistically, it's like you'll 
you might see examples of each of those, but in practice, I feel like you see workflow portability, right? If you standardize on tools like Terraform, you can provision across multiple clouds pretty easily. Data portability, I feel like you almost never see in practice, right? The cost is too astronomical, where, you know, to your point, traffic portability, if you have copies running in multiple clouds, you just do traffic shaping, it's relatively achievable. But yeah, you really only see workflow and traffic in practice. Yeah, and, and a funny thing I see happen now that we've, we've watched this multi-cloud journey for a few years now, is that if you don't optimize for workflow portability up front, it's really, really painful later. And so what it, the cloud has been around long enough now that there are cloud-first startups that are becoming public companies, and they've been all one cloud for you know, seven or eight years. And after that, they're now buying companies. They're big enough to buy companies, and they're buying a company on Azure or something. And that experience of having this you know, 800-person company having to suddenly deal with you know, from n equals one to n equals two is extremely violent. And we've seen multiple times where entire DevOps you know, teams or security teams just leave the company because they view themselves as a single cloud sort of organization and this is too violent um, in, in, in a process sort of way. And so you know, I always say don't optimize multi-cloud in terms of using multiple at first, but optimize the workflow right away. So even if you're a new company, get the workflow right to use a single cloud and stick with a single cloud for as long as you can, but at least when that goes from n equals one to n equals two, you're way better equipped to handle it. Yeah, yeah, I think that, that seems fair. So I think maybe just summarizing what you said, it's like, you know, in some sense, multi-cloud isn't necessarily a choice we see people make. It's, it's that it happens because of acquisition or merger or you just get credits and it's a good deal or there's some differentiated service. So it just, it sort of happens organically without it being a conscious choice. And I think the reality is, from our experience, that optimize for workflow portability and acknowledge that workload portability and data portability are, are sort of, you know, they're kind of myths, yeah. right? There's real cost associated uh, with trying to architect uh, for those. Yeah, there's, there's basically fear-based reasons and practical reasons, and that there, there are practical reasons. Right, yeah.